Hey, this is Mountain Ghost 556. Okay, check it out. I'm going to go over an adhesive I've been using for years. I mean, many years. For different types of applications and purposes. How I became familiar with this adhesive, I was going up to Fort Campbell, Kentucky to visit some friends that were stationed with the 101st. And I had gone by this Army Surplus store. And so I was like, I'm going in. You know, what guy doesn't want to go into an Army Surplus store? I turn the corner, and there it is. There's this ghillie suit right there. And I'm looking at it, and I'm thinking, wow, this is this is awesome. I've been making ghillie suits since I was seven years old when I first saw the two Marine Scout snipers on the cover of Gung Ho. So I, I've been making these for a while, and I've been hand-stitching them. So I walk up, and I'm like, okay, this doesn't look like some kind of commercial thing. This is handmade. It was probably made by one of the SF guys or snipers or one of the recon guys up in Fort Campbell. And so I started examining it. I'm like, okay, if this somebody can make this handmade, then I can do it. Well, I saw this adhesive on there, and it was black at the time. And I was like, okay, that's, that's cool. And I could never figure out what it was. I spent money, time, and tons of BDUs. Thank God I was an ROTC. I could get BDUs for free to figure out what this was. So my quest ended my senior year when I went and visited a friend he also was stationed at Fort Campbell at the 101st. He was a rocket on and in a reconnaissance element. I go into his barracks, and what's sitting there is his ghillie suit. I walk over, and I say, hey, did you make this ghillie suit? He's like, yeah. I walk over there. I examine it. There's the same type of black adhesive. I'm like, dude, I've been trying to figure out for, like, forever what this stuff is. And he goes, it's, get this. I've now, I've been looking at this particular product for the entire four years I was in ROTC in high school, when I was getting shoe shine supplies, staring me right dead in the face. Shoe goo. Some of you might know this stuff, some of you might not, but I guarantee you, if you've ever had to go get shoe shining stuff, you've seen it sitting right there. Let me get this light on there a little bit better. It used to come in black, it doesn't come in black anymore, it just comes in clear. And I've used it to repair tents, sleeping bags, ponchos. I've even used it to do its intended purpose, fix shoes. Go figure. So I'm going to go over a few things about this particular uh, adhesive, just to let you know that it's out there. Preppers, survivalists, and all the like type people, very ingenuitive. And I'm sure you probably can find a lot more uses for this than I have. So I'm going to go ahead and show you some of those. Okay, you probably saw this laying on the table. Some of you know what it is, some of you don't. It's my ghillie suit. This is the, the bottom half of my ghillie suit. I'm going to show you just how strong this adhesive is on this particular fabric. It's really strong. <clears throat> there you go. And I was pulling pretty hard on it. It'll literally rip the fabric around it before the adhesive will come off the fabric itself. If it gets caught on something, it'll tear the fabric. It's I've ripped the entire side of a ghillie suit once. But... That's just to show you that the it's tough. It sticks on there really well. I've painted it, as you can see, because it does come clear. I can find, yeah, see, there's a spot that I missed. I need to retouch my ghillie suit up. There's a spot right there, and it's clear. And I just paint it, and it paints over real well. So it's really strong. Uh, like I said, if you know, you don't be afraid to use it in applications such as this or mending something, because it will work. Okay. Okay, so let's take a look at here what I've been doing with this. I like to affix Velcro fields to equipment and things like that for various reasons. Uh, ID, uh, IR tapes, stuff like that, uh, to identify certain things such as, you know, this is my first aid pack right in here. First aid's here. So I need to, actually a good idea would take red tape and tape it onto this pull string so I can, so they'd actually be able to see because some people wouldn't take a hint of that. But anyways, that's not that's not the case here. So I got this put here to identify as a first aid kit. So see, doing YouTube videos sometimes brings out new ideas. I need to change that out. Anyways, so I've got a field affixed right here to my notebook. Now, when I spoke about mending stuff, this actually came apart right there. The seam busted. For whatever reason, I don't know why. I just sewed it up and then ran some shoe goo to reinforce it. Good as gold. Now, one of the things about this particular adhesive, it will lose its qualities, its sticking qualities, for lack of a better word. Um, 
because I don't think this is the same formula they used when I was using it back in high school. I, it just doesn't seem to stick as well to certain types of fabric. Now, as far as my ghillie suit goes, this stuff is it's on there. It's not coming off. But as you can see, and I'm going to show you an example. There you go. That right there, it lost its adhesive quality and it started to peel back. That can be fixed by just re-gluing it. That's not a big deal. But one of the things I like about it, especially when I'm you know doing the Velcro field and stuff, because when you pull on the, the patch or whatever kind of identifier you put on there, it puts a lot of stress on the sewing, the thread right there. Is it better than sewing? You know, yes and no. It has its, like I said, its ups and downs. The one thing about it is when you start pulling it and you start to pull up, you start to pull up here. See, as this is old, this hat's seven, seven years old. When you pull it, and if you do pull a corner, it starts to raise. This, all this right here is glued on. So you're not going to continuously start busting threads in these directions. It's going to stay on. That's one good thing I like about using this as an adhesive to put um, Velcro fields on because you, that's a lot of strain on some of these patches and stuff that you're pulling off there. It starts to bust those seams, and then you got to go back and resew it. One of the other things about it is it smells. So do it outside. It has a. It's like, I don't know. Remember that old rubber cement when you're in school and you roll it up and pretend they're boogers and flick them at people. Picture that smell, and or think about that smell, and put it on steroids. Another thing I found out is this has nothing to do with like really prepping or survival. It has to do with my own uh, personal experience. Do not. If you do tend to build a ghillie suit for whatever reason, don't take it into the field with you like three days after you did it. Because it's going to, literally you can smell the person before you even see them. And you're like, well, I know what that smell is. So, yeah, don't, just let it sit outside under cover for a month or two and get rid of that smell. I'm trying to think of anything I'm missing. I don't want to make this too long. But it's shoe goo. I mean, it's great stuff. I mean, I carry it with me. It. When it gets down to about that, I don't like to carry a whole tube. I don't necessarily need a whole tube. But when it gets right around there, I roll it up, put it in a uh, plastic bag. I've seen people bust shoe goo inside their rucksacks, and that's just terrible. Not a good not a good day for them. So, yeah, take a look at it. Like I said, preppers, uh, survivalists, very ingenuitive people. And I'm sure you guys can probably find a lot, diff lot more uses for this than I have. That's just some of the applications I use it for. Okay, now I'm going to go to 5.6.